Okay, so let me share my screen and see if I can get this to work. Okay. Here. Okay, so this is my little Google Drive where I have um, all my class stuff. So I have rubrics. Because in, in Oklahoma, of um, the world language standards, the communication emphasis is around uh, interpretive, interpersonal, and presentational use of the language. And so I develop tasks for each unit. And it's basically kind of like they're like a project. Like So they have three projects per, per unit to demonstrate proficiency. And then they do weekly quizzes. But what I was showing you is so my unit, um, my unit plans also have my lesson plans in them, uh, my syllabus, my quizzes. Okay, so, sorry, this is the wrong, let's just pull it, oh, here it is, okay. So on Learn Kiowa, what I use is, so unit one is pretty much um, the help phrases. So, uh, where you go? so unit one, we I don't necessarily have them watch these videos unless they like they want to. You know, those are resources they can watch on their own. But I use this PowerPoint right here to learn the health phrases, and we listen to the recordings. We learn the signs that go with them. And then this is like what they see in class. So this is how we practice the pronunciation of the help phrases. And then I print this handout for them. And then they get this little handout for their little binders. Uh, and then this is an actual PowerPoint file. This is kind of more for teacher candidates or language adult learners. If you wanted to download the PowerPoint and listen to the sound file. Our kids, um, for my students, we practice it in class. So we kind of do the pronunciation together and then individually, and then I assess them. So we don't use the PowerPoint per se. But um, so this is part of unit one, the help phrase. And then, of course, the sounds of Kiowa. And then after I get, after they kind of get through that, um, when we start unit two, that's when we go to lesson one. So lesson one, and for learners, we use the study staff, the study staff link session. So this is their the first lesson. We use this, this is a target language for um, part of unit two. So they have to learn all these phrases. So we just have to and the uh, free translation. But the biggest part that we use in class is the conversation. And so we do lots of conversational practice. So they'll pair up with, they'll pair up with like, you know, their friends, like people that they get. And, um, and I just, you know, they practice. And they all have journals. They have little composition books. Or, uh, like bell ringers. Keep them in a little baggie to practice with each other if they want to. Um, so, yeah, so unit two is where we start getting into these conversations. And so we learn the greetings first, and then, then we go to lesson two, and we do the farewell. Down. And so here's the farewell. And so they learned that language. We go through all that. We practice it. And then we do the conversations. And these com conversations are cumulative, meaning they include the new vocabulary from this lesson, but they also include the vocabulary from the previous lesson as well. So they're cumulative. They build on each other. So they're getting new language and the language of previous language. And 
so um, we'll use these with each other. They practice that, and there's their note cards. So that's basically my unit two is those first two lessons. And then after that, unit three, which will kind of be like towards end of October, most of November. Um, then we use the open-ended questions and statements. And they learn all these responses and different options. There's a lot of vocabulary in this one. And then there's conversation. The vocabulary, I mean the note cards. And then, oh, yeah, lesson four is lesson four. I think we lost Melody. Her connection was gotten bad. Um, but yeah, it looks like she goes off those lessons that she has posted on LearnKiowa.org. Yeah, so if you're teaching a class, you can go to her site and you can use those lessons. It's a uh, it's the lessons that um, Dane wrote and she modified it and put on her site. Cricket, it says you're the host now. Oh. On, on my screen, that's what appeared. Oh. Huh. It's that's host. Weird. Anyway, that's uh, kind of what we do. Yeah. Your uh, sound is going in and out. Your connection must be a little bit bad. So do you have like a, a midterm or a final or anything, or do you have like a beginning assessment, a mid and a post or um, something like that? Yeah, they do uh, weekly quizzes. So I'll use uh, some language on the first, on the first quiz or maybe the first couple quizzes. And then they have a midterm that they have to do, which is kind of like a accumulation of whatever we've learned up until uh, fall break, which is in October. And then they have a final uh, semester test um, in December, usually the week before classes get out when they're doing like their semester projects and presentations. So, and I use um, the language in the lessons that we just went over. So I'll like pick some target phrases and, you know, they'll have to, mainly the, mainly the emphasis is on being able to um, understand how to use it. So I'll have them record themselves saying the appropriate response to something, and then I'll be able to assess their pronunciation, but also their comprehension. And then, um, and then I have I use like multiple choice, true, false, you know, those types. So I try to vary my my little tests up with them. So um, when we uh, were. We, the program first started and we were doing um, our first time at being teacher candidates. Um, we had to take a pre, because it was in the grant, we had to take a pre-assessment, a mid-assessment, and a, a final assessment. And so, um, and it was like, just kind of like introductory things like, uh, you know, how are you? What's your name? Um, where do you work? Where do you live? Where'd you grow up? Who's your family? That kind of stuff. And of course, if you've never heard Kiowa, you'll score zero on it. Well, yes and no. Uh, and uh, you'll probably score zero on it. If you heard a little bit of Kiowa, maybe you'll score um, you know, a little bit. And then you hope, but by the time you're halfway, like if it's a year long program, then by the time you're halfway through, so you're done with your semester, you take it and you will have learned more. 
uh, and you'll take that test again. And then it's the same test. And then at the very end, you know, you hope to know most of it. So uh, anyway, um, that's kind of how we did that. Um, do you remember that melody when we were um, first oh. starting? Yeah, I'm wondering, I don't know if uh, they're using that, if they're doing something like that for this group of teacher candidates. But um, last week, um, I think Dane showed us an assessment that he's using with his uh, his OU students for Kiowa 1 and Kiowa 2. I thought that was really interesting. I sure would like to kind of look in. What was it again? I have to jog my memory. I remember him um, talking Let's see. I, so he, he was on Canvas. So it's on Canvas. And I guess he records himself saying something in Kiowa, like one of those greetings or one of the uh, questions. And then we then the, the learner has to select the correct, um, like what the meaning is. So a lot of <laughs> even us, like we would hear it and we were like, he was just selecting um whatever we were saying. <laughs> so some of us were getting it wrong. It was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, he, he basically had all the language that they're supposed to learn the whole semester on that one exam. And basically what he'll, what he said he'll do is they can go take it as many times as they want. But the goal is by the end of the semester is that they would be able to be proficient and basically pass all, you know, answer correctly to all of them, which I thought is really a really cool way to do an assessment. Okay, yeah, I yeah, that was fun. I like that. And some of them are a little bit hard. But that's the point of it is that you're not going to pass it when you first do it. And then you can do mid and then you can do, uh, uh, you know, closing. So yeah, it was like, what is it? Goy, yok, goy, and da. And then he would, then he would like had like three. I used to, I do that. Um, sometimes when I get on Zoom, I'll do a poll and I'll do something like that. Um, very similar to what he's doing just for people to, here but um uh what is it yeah so yeah that was a good one i like that one so it's just like um you know if you say if i said goy ya goy goy ya goy im da and so what was that am i saying um how are you am i saying um look at the dog Am I saying I am a young man? Am I saying, um, uh, what am I saying? Goy ma and da. I I forgot to say the goy ma and da. Or am I saying I a uh, young woman or a Kiowa woman? So anyway, so you can just pick the right one. So yeah, that was, yeah, that was a good one. To the new candidates, are you required to do 10 lesson plans still? Do you know? I believe we are required to do lesson plans. I'm not sure of the number, but that sounds correct. Isn't that what we had to do, 10 or 9? I can't remember. Better do 10 because Tony made the 10 uh, theme, you know, and then we had to do one lesson plan for each theme. So that way there'd be an equal number of lesson plans in there. To me, that was the most time consuming. It, and so that's why this is helpful for you new candidates to listen and get ideas. I, I was just thinking today because, I, you know, she said to come with ideas. And I thought at some point someone could do our leaders, traditional and present or outstanding Kiowas in contemporary as far as history and and because we you have to know those as I guess as part of Oklahoma and American history the presidents and the governors and I thought that it would be good in this class and I don't know if it goes into the world language curriculum but you know our Kiowa leaders their names uh, some outstanding attribute that they did I just thought that would be, you know, a, a lesson plan that you could, someone could do. I love that idea. That's awesome. So, so in the world language standards, uh, they do have to 
they have this thing called cultural comparison and historical comparison, like historical context. So basically whatever their target language is that they're learning, they have to be able to make connections and make comparisons and be familiar with, you know, a little bit of the history and culture. So um, that would be really awesome to incorporate. I might, I might think about that for uh, my level two, my Kiowa two students. That might be a fun final project for them. Like a and research if, project. And for as far as the contemporary ones, I don't know, maybe if, the chairman would, you know, stop by the class and talk about himself or record it. It could be recorded or you could do. I was just thinking about in Scott Mama Day and Kurt Kickingbird and Dr. Rhodes. Those are contemporary people that are still, well, except for in Scott, that are still alive and that could probably, it would be. I'm trying to think how I how I want to what it would be encouraging for the students that these Kiowa people what they've accomplished in their lives and these young people can uh, strive for that also. Oh, definitely of um, definitely for uh, like and stop mama day like with him being a Pulitzer Prize winner um that like is so I mean because that's very rare I mean that in itself is rare but to just you know show people that hey there's you know this uh, Native American author that and he happens to be Kiowa and he's very eloquent and was able to just do all these amazing you know tell these amazing stories and uh, there's actually, I was actually looking into that because um, my Kiowa 2 students, they want to do more um, history. They're very interested in learning more about the history. So um, I was researching, okay, how can we incorporate M. Scott Mamaday, like get them to, you know, read some of his work and then like do some type of, I don't know, reflection or essay or something on it. But I love that idea of kind of having them research and learn about these um, historical and contemporary leaders. And then if, if we could uh, get them to maybe do like a video interview or, you know, I don't know, something. Um, I know our current chairman is always on like podcasts and the radio and, you know, these different news things that might be really cool to look into. And then you could do the societies too and have a brief interview presentation by the, the, the leaders of those societies or the past societies of the Kiowas would, would also be another idea. Oh, yeah. Most valuable player in twenty twelve. Um, yeah. So like that. So that's a good one. And and uh, making sure to fit those ten themes because the ten themes that she made um will uh like kind of tell you like when like you're not gonna do like uh, same day stories in the summer. So that'll be more in the winter time, that thing that will be in there. So yo, and then you'll put the sounds in the beginning. So it will be August, September that you're doing sounds. So, um, uh, so, you know, if you like make your lesson plans to fit those 10 themes, that'll kind of keep you going throughout the year, having a, a, a base for that. And then there's all those other lesson plans that other teacher candidates from previous cohorts had gone through um, that uh, should can be printed out or shared with everybody so you can have them for your classes. But all of them, like all of us on here that um, have been through it, um, we all have, have at least 10 lesson plans, you know, that'll fit those themes that um, that the program has that you guys can use. And so we have, how many did we graduate? 12, 17, I don't know, 17. I don't know how many we graduated. So, but there's that. 
probably close to 20 and then each of those have 10. So there's a lot of lesson plans you can access if you're teaching class, as well as making your own. And looking at learnkiowa.org. And also to add to that cricket, we also had different age groups. So like for instance, I did a lot of my lesson plans on early childhood. So like infants, toddlers, preschool up to five years old. And then I also did some with high school because I started substituting at the Anadarko Kiowa class back then too. But all of us have different age groups too that we worked with with our lesson plans. Yeah. Lesson plans. Um, I think those are in the drive. And then uh, learn. And also study stacks. That's a good one that you can use for to teach a class, teach you know several <laughs> several classes with the study stack. Um, so, so just you know to help you make your lesson plans, and then um, what are some other areas that they can go to? What are some other um, areas, Courtney, they can think of? Or places that it, things have been posted? Oh, how about the, the uh, language department's Facebook page? If you go back, Tony made some things and she put a lot of them up there. Some of your stuff too, I think is up there, Courtney. I think uh, so. And yeah, it's like some of the videos that they've yeah. posted that they've done are good little um, supplements, I think. Yeah, that'll help make those lesson plans. Um, trying to think. I use the drive a lot, so yeah. it's easy so, for me to find stuff on the drive. Yeah. Um, you'll probably want to make sure you have access to that drive if you're going to be teaching. It's very helpful. And that, Melody, did I see where you put up the um, Dane's um, glossary? Is that on learnkiowa.org too? The glossary? Yeah. Yeah, it's on there. Um, so let's see, it's on the home page. Okay. Let me see if I can let me the see if I can share. So you can look at that. Um, if you're like trying to you know, like we can't think in English and then try to use English words to uh stick in Kiowa, it doesn't work that way. It has a different way of saying it than, you know, using it our English word, so you can't do it that way. That would be using Kiowa to talk English. So can't do it that way, um, but it will help you with spelling things correctly, the glossary. Yeah, it's right here. It's on the home page. So you just scroll down to getting started and you can click on the link. I need to update it because this is the last year's version. I need to put the 2024 one on there. Because Dane sent that to me over the summer. Um, but this is kind of what it looks like. It's the uh, Kiowa English Student Glossary. And you can use uh, Control F for the find function. And basically use English to find a word. Like one example that I always use is looking for the word respect. And it pops up and then you just kind of go through until you find something that sounds like what you're trying to say. And then like, here's the word. So the word respect is a verb. To treat respectfully. So that's uh, just an example. So yeah, glossary is very, very useful. 
And also remember the mentors, you need to check with the mentors what you want to say or write to make sure that that's the way a Kiowa would say it. Yeah. Because you can't just stick in English words, I mean, Kiowa words to say something that you're thinking in English. It's got to be phrased in a Kiowa way. So you kind of have to know that. So I don't know if y'all got to learn the structure of it, but the basic kind of structure is the um, verb is at the end of the sentence and then right next to the verb in the front of the verb would be your pronoun. And then before the pronoun in front of that pronoun at the beginning of the sentence will be the nouns. So that's kind of the structure of a Kiowa, basic structure of a Kiowa sentence. And that's helpful whenever you're listening to some, like somebody talking in Kiowa or singing. Um, that'll help you discern those sounds that you're hearing. Um, you're like, oh, I know that word. And then you'll, then you could get the rest of the sentence because you might know the noun or you might know the verb. And uh, then you'll know where you are when somebody's talking in that sentence or singing something. And that way uh, it, it really helps you kind of Start understanding it if you understand that structure. So, Melody, did we ha did you have um? something that you wanted us to go over or were we just talking about different stuff? So anybody that is a new candidate, did you guys have any questions? Uh, no questions at the moment. I'm taking a lot of notes, but I mean, it's all been helpful so far. Uh, so if there's any resources out there, um, I think you mentioned a drive. So we, I don't know that I have access to that yet, but I'll definitely start with the, the website and then downloading some of the content from Facebook, uh, see some of the lessons on there as well. And I think that was the most helpful is to um, <clears throat> how you graduate over the course of time and introduce our, our uh, seasonal cultural uh, information as well. That's, that, I think that's really relevant. So I'm looking forward to, to incorporating that. So. Um, I think, well, good. I'm glad it's been a little helpful. I think, not 100% sure, but I think Melody also on that learnkiowa.org has our outreaches that when we, um, uh, you know, going through the six and a half years of uh, developing the teacher training program and being a trainee ourselves, uh, going through it ourselves as well as developing it, um, it's, uh, we would do outreaches to the community. And, um, if you look at those outreaches, uh, they're uh, the virtual because of because of COVID. Uh, 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 they uh, we would do yeah. outreaches, so we would have like a PowerPoint put together. And, um, those two drawers. And uh, so we would uh, have a PowerPoint put together and there were themes that we would do. So we did like weather themes. We did, uh, we did uh, our uh, kind of like our mig migration. We did um, our uh, bands and where they, where they were. Um, we've done um, churches. Um, uh, what else, Carolyn? 
was that Christmas? Yeah, the churches was Christmas, wasn't it? Oh. Uh, we done stories. Same same day. Oh. Uh, um Courtney did a one about a video of kids setting the table and eating at the table. Um you know, there's things about getting ready in the morning. So good, good okay. stuff on there. If I and I think Melody has it on her learnkiowa.org. And it'll I think it says outreaches. Um I just glanced, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I think I I think I saw it on there. So if she comes back on, you can ask her. But those are good. That's a beneficial thing because it might have some information that you want. But it's a lot. And we didn't used to have all this. Um, we had um, one of the things that uh, uh, that has been helpful with the elders is um, the Kiowa cultural tapes. And I guess, did they do those in the 80s, Carolyn? The late... 1970s okay and um and it was just recording elders talking about a certain subject and um and they would talk in kiowa and that's getting to hear that kiowa and that that was really helpful for elders um to hear that and jogging their memories of how to say things um and uh so that's been so that was really good there's the so there's those two the Kiowa cultural um, uh, tapes, recordings, I guess we call them. So um, kind of advanced. <laughs> what is the access to those um, like conversation or stories as far as the, are they online or do we go to like a repository somewhere to listen to those or? The outreaches, I think she has on learnkiowa.org. And um, I think you might have to, I don't know if you have to go through the Kiowa tribe to get the Kiowa cultural recordings or if Melody got access to post those. Um, so whenever she comes back on, we will we can ask her about the outreach recordings and the Kiowa cultural um, uh, recordings from the late 70s. Okay, this is Melody. Okay, sorry. What were you're trying to access the outreaches? So yeah, do you did you put the outreaches on your um, uh, website? Um, so I think I put. I was in the process. I'm in the process of transferring all of them because they're on like my personal YouTube channel, okay. and I need to transfer them all to Learn Kiowa so they're all on the that YouTube channel. So um, they are publicly accessible. If you Google on YouTube um, or search on YouTube, uh, Kiowa language outreach, all the videos that will pop up. But um, I started doing it. So you probably saw on Lord Kiowa, that one outreach we did on the Kiowa uh, place names, Goidomga. That's the one um, I said. Yeah, that popped up. And then we have the Native Voices Rising, the one we did in December of this past year. That's on there. And so I'm just slowly like, you know, trying to go back and backtrack and put all put them all on there so they're in one place. But you can still access them. Um, maybe that's something I can work on, maybe developing a page, like a resource page that has a list of like here's all the themes and the topics that were covered and then the links to it. So I can I can work on something like that. But uh learnkiowa.org is intended to be like a a place to a, kind of like a community resource page so that anything related to Kiowa, like a, 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 um, eventually it'd be nice to create a, a page for each uh, language teacher so that they can have their own page to reference for their classes um, to, you know, kind of say like, here's what's going on in my class so you can refer students to a website. So that's um, kind of a goal, I guess. Um, there's also some Kiowa language um, contributors that um, do a lot of social media, like Facebook posting. I know Robert Garza is one of them. He's really into the stories, and but not everyone has Facebook. So one of the ideas is to see if, if people if people like that are interested in um, having a, a page, like an archive or a repository to keep 
their materials and then they can reference people to that page. So that's one thing, but um, yeah, I can work on getting that. And as far as the Kiowa culture, outings, I believe, uh, let's see, when we last talked with Dane, so if an individual wants a copy like for themselves, um, you do have to request it through the Kiowa tribe. And I think the credentialing board was working on a process with the language department. Like, I think there's like a form or like an agreement of some sort that we have to fill out, but I don't know where that is. And if Dane, I don't see Dane on here today, but we maybe we can ask Dane um, to share with us some ideas on how we could access those. Um, cause I was told <laughs> by, um, our mentors and especially by, uh, Grandma D, uh, Ms. Dolores Toibo Herrigera, that the best way to learn Kiowa is to listen to those recordings because they, they're thinking in Kiowa, they're talking in Kiowa and it's kind of like you go to sleep with them and you, uh, retain it. My grandma, Ruth White Fox Redbird, she had those on tapes and she would go to sleep. She would alternate between going to sleep to those recordings playing of all these elders just talking about different topics in Kiowa. And then she would also play like her uh, Kiowa gourd, gourd dance songs or peyote songs, different things like that. But those Kiowa culture program recordings, it's really like emotional. I get like really excited thinking about it um, because those elders that are in those recordings from the 1970s, they say in Kiowa that the reason why they're doing that and they're having those discussions is for us, for the future Kiowas, so that we'll always know how to think in Kiowa and that our language will never you know, cease to exist. Well, it'll always be here because they're leaving that for us in the future. So it's really cool to hear them talk about that. And they also um, do prayers and songs and just all kinds of things. Um, I will say if you're really interested in those, um, one of the requests from our mentors is to do bi-weekly Sunday afternoon Kiowa sessions. And on those Sunday afternoon sessions, we pick one of the Kiowa Culture Program rep recordings. There's like hundreds of them. We pick one and then we listen to it. And after each speaker talks, which they talk for maybe a couple of minutes at a time, we pause the recording and then our mentors who join us on these Sunday calls, they give their interpretation and a translation of what that speaker just talked about. And then we take notes and then we talk, talk through and then we listen to the next. So it might take like two sessions to go through one recording, but you get all this information and learn new vocabulary and stuff. So if you look on the syllabus for learnkiowa.org, the last couple pages of the syllabus for fall 2024, there's the Zoom link and the QR code to join those Sunday sessions. And if you're interested, put your email in the chat and I can add you to the list. And I send out email reminders um, on the weekends. So they're every other Sunday and we're gonna have our first one of the semester this coming Sunday on the 25th. So if you're interested, that's a good way to, to listen to those recordings while you're waiting for access to your own personal copy. Aho, I'll add you to the list. Okay, before we stop, I wanted to just give a suggestion also. Uh, last November, Amanda Hill had some Kiowa elders and we went to the Wichita Mountains to their Information Interpretation Center visitor center, but do you remember on OETA or PBS, they had a documentary on the Buffalo and it's several hours long, but somehow she had the OETA staff just kind of show the parts that were just pertain to the Kiowa and the Buffalo. And so that was, that would be another good resource if you wanted to just show a film of a or a video. It had in Scott Mama Day speaking and telling stories, and they also had a Kiowa lady 
uh, speaking about Kiowa and the buffalo. So that's another lesson plan you could present if when you're in class. You might talk to Amanda Hill and see how she went about getting that done, or if you could how you could access the video that OETA had. The two there are two ladies from OETA there at this afternoon session. Well, it's morning and afternoon session. And the Carnegie class was there and the Anadarko class was there also. And I do remember, I remember when Ramon went, he also took them like on a field trip. He went to Saddle Mountain and he went by Saddle Mountain. I don't know if they drove by Rainy Mountain. It may have been too far out of the way. And then he went through the wildlife refuge and they did some things there. And then he took them to the program that was being presented by Amanda Hill. Oh, oh, that sounds awesome. I totally forgot about that, but that would be really, really helpful, especially if we want to show that in our classes, you know, it'd be good for students to, to hear and see and, you know, I'm sure we could turn it into some type of a assignment or project. Um, aren't those available on their website? I've never looked, but it seems like they would be available somewhere or like on their YouTube channel. I'll have to look it up, but that is really cool. I remember when they were talking about that. I saw some posts on social media about that. So, uh, Melody, uh, you have another person that would like you to add them to that email chain. Oh, uh -oh. okay, awesome. I sure will. I'll make sure to include all of you. Awesome, got it. Let me take a screenshot so I have everyone's emails. All right, cool. So when I send my reminder email, I'll send it out on Saturday. So for Sunday afternoon, and then um, I'll also add you to, a, I have a Google Calendar invite too that has the same information. So in case you use Google Calendar, um, that'll be available also. So be on the lookout for that. And yeah, so. I know we only schedule these for an hour, but you know, it's a good time to share and discuss and brainstorm. Um, but tomorrow, Wednesday is our um, two hour from 6.30 to 8.30 um, mentor session with our elders. And um, we're gonna kind of continue through practicing. I need to update our schedule because we had to cancel last Wednesday session because there was a wake service going on at that time. So. Um, a lot of our, our mentors were not available, but um, we will meet up tomorrow for our mentor session. We start at 6.30 and we go till 8.30 and those are recorded and posted on the Learn Kiowa YouTube and also on the website. So if you're not able to make it, then you'll be able to catch the recording. So awesome. I'm glad to see everyone. Um, does anyone have ideas or or suggestions or things that you'd like to focus on for next week? Like um, maybe we can do some research and find out if uh, those lesson plan archives will be available to teacher candidates. Um, so that's one thing we can follow up on, but does anyone have any like specific requests that we can try to prepare for? It might be fun to... Uh or interesting to look at those lesson plans. Um, let me see, just like for instance, let's see. Um, if I did that and then um, let's see if I can go into drive and uh, just kind of show them like what that, what that, um, what that might look like. Um, and let's see. Um, so you have this right here and um well, let's see here's mine so um 
this is the kind of the form that we had, and this is what uh, Melody was talking about. Level one, pre-K, eighth grade, level two, ninth and above. And then these are the 10 uh, lessons, that, you know, that it would fit the best under. So maybe it'll fit under numbers, maybe it'll fit under kinship or whatever. So um, this is the content and the and student instruction and teacher instruction. So that is, um, anyway, so there's, you know, things like that. Um, let's see if I can. So this is like a song. There's a couple songs on here. Oh, here's the Kiowa Band one. So, so that's uh, that's the one for the link. I don't know if you have, is this the outreach that you have on there? Yeah, I don't think I have the slides on there though. So it's just a video, but that okay. is awesome. This is one of my favorite outreaches because it really talks about our like history and how we traveled. And it's also very like sad. It's hard to, to kind of relive it, but it's also really interesting. So that's really cool. So, um, so that's uh, like if you go back. So let's see, Melody, you're probably on here. Where are you? Where are you on here? <laughs> oh, here you are. So, so you can see all these people have made lesson plans, and so you you have access or you can have access to those. So you see, oh, look at the color ones oh, on oh. there. Well, I mean, oh, you could look at any of them, but there's fishes and eating lesson plan. Uh, that she made and let's see colors where's the colors uh let's see it'd be there's good. a storm one. Oh yeah the storm chasing song there's uh, a video that goes with that too there's a lot of my my high school videos i had a like i mean high school lesson plans i had little videos that they had to watch but the colors one is like i mean you could use it for any age but I was really excited about it because I could finally teach colors, talk about colors to the little kids that I was working with at the time. Um, so it's a lot of fun to, and I tried to use like oh. real, real things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is so cool. That that grayish is kind of purpley gray. Um, oh. Little. Oh yeah, that's good. I do. Hi. So, we're here. I again. Go to the pink. I uh, keep going to the pink. So, I okay. think the pink is a lot of fun. A so, a. so, yeah, state a, a, a for purple. Bear, bear berries. <laughs> yep, the bear food. And then that king goodle. Uh, wait, go back up. Okay, go, go back up. Okay, yeah, that right one. there. That one, the king goodle. Uh. So, if you look that word up in the Kiowa glossary, there's a story behind that. Apparently, let's see, I think, what is that? The dog, dogwood tree? Um, maybe I'm getting the name wrong, but it's a pink flower that, that uh, Kiowa people would bring the fly flowers into their teepees and it would signify spring, like the start of springtime and the end of winter. And they would bring the flowers into their teepees and homes and it would signify like, hey, spring's here. So I just think to me, like that's a really cool color. Um, I know a lot of people use pink as like bubble gum, like a, it's kind of a, a newer word, a contemporary word for a bubble gum for pink, but this uh, king gula is um, that pink flower that grows, I think it's a dogwood tree, but it's in the glossary. Uh, there's a little story that goes with that. And uh, Grandma Dorothy, when we were trying to come up with a word for pink, that was more cultural. Like we didn't think bubble gum was very cultural. <laughs> so we wanted something that was like historical. So we came up with that word and it's in the glossary, but anyway, um, that's one of my favorite like lessons about colors is that, you know, they're co in context. Oh, that's cool. See, I hadn't heard that word for pink. I just heard the taste good for bubble gum. Oh, I love that. I learned a new word. And then here they are right here. So this is like, like a little lesson. Um, oh, I like this too. I like the colors of the horses because there's a whole bunch of horse colors. Um, there's a whole bunch of cloud, like gray for cloud and sky colors. Um, oh, this is really cool. Yeah. And cricket, 
Hi. And isn't there a song that has the colors of the horses? Yeah, I have that one in mind. Let's see. Um, so go ahead. And so then you could like, if you like learn all the different lesson plans, then um, where's that one? Horse color. Here it is. Um, oh, Adam Gida, Adam Gida, Adam Gida, oh, hey, hey, uh, say, gone up, oh, ya, Adam, pa, oh, a good old dog, uh, pa, pa, what is it, pa, oh, a dot, a dog, pa, say, yo, pa, say, ya, pa, da, da, eh, hey, hey, and that's the, um, and that's the song and there's a recording that can go with it. And so that way you can learn the in the different colors of the horses. Um, and you could, you know, use that, uh, the thing that Melody has. Um, anyway, there's spotted ones, there's uh, buckskin colors, there's a little dog, uh, the red horses. Um, so anyway, I thought that was neat. All right. Oh, yeah, I love the horse colors, too, because, you know, it really speaks to, you know, in recent years, over the past couple hundred years, Kiowas were very, we were a horse culture. And so horses were really important to us. So I love like how we had so many different names for the actual color, like the different colors of horses. So mm -hmm. and that we have songs to go with. Paul, oh, so there's some of uh, Courtney's. Oh, I wonder in the portfolio, do you, is that where you have some of your um, videos, Courtney? Let me look. Probably. Maybe um, outreach. Look under outreach. Oh, under under portfolio. Okay. <laughs> outreach. Okay. So Courtney has some of these things you can, oh, yeah, here they are. So, oh. um, yeah. So the different Mister. ones. Okay. So she's put outreaches up on hers. Kiowa camps, kinship, that was your family one, right? Um, oh. I love what Courtney um, Courtney compiled that uh, medallion right there that shows, or the rosette that shows yeah. all of our um, Kiowa values. And actually, I'm writing a, a paper for this Indigenous Knowledge Journal right now. And Courtney, I'm about to reach out to you with the excerpt to to ask to see if I could use get permission to use that and publish it. Um, of course, giving credit to you and all the because it, it was developed with all of our elders. But um, it's the it's ten Kiowa values, and we got those values from those Kiowa culture program recordings from doing what we do on Sundays. And Courtney put it together. It's just so beautiful. I just love the display. So there's a lot of resources um, that y'all can use. Uh, did you want to go over that or Courtney or not? Can we do that next week? Oh, yeah, it's getting late in it. Okay. All right, let me get out of here. Okay. Um, waiting. Oh, here's you were talking earlier about stories. Here's uh, here's same day stories. Or a stain day. Stain day on handle. Oh, him being a trickster. All right. Anyway, so just there's there, those are on there. Carolyn has made some too. So, all right. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, that might be something for our new, um, for our newer candidates to just check and see if you have access to those Google Drive because that's a good resource to explore and kind of start making notes about what topics you'd want to do your lesson plans on for the credentialing process. So yeah, there's lots of ideas out there. So lots of things to draw from. All right. Any other questions? All right. Awesome. Okay. Well, we will go ahead and call it a night. Um, but Thank you everyone for attending and uh, I'll, I'll send the recording out to the group that um, got the emails and for those of you that are that joined us uh, that put your emails in the chat I'll make sure that you get the recording as well.
Um, and then I'll make sure you to include you on the invites to those Sunday sessions. And we'll um, see you next time, next Tuesday. And definitely bring okay. ideas or if you have things you'd like to share. Um, yeah, be ready. Jackie Rosen. Hey, uh, oh. 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 okay. oh, 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 in, in, <laughs> okay, hi guys. Have a good one.